hello friends welcome back in today's video we are going to see what is the bluetooth mesh protocol the bluetooth mesh protocol was released by the bluetooth sig that is special interest group in june 2017 bluetooth and ble both support point to point or one to multi point topology but both do not support the multi to multi point mesh topology so consider the case here the smartphone is connected with the smartwatch and this represents the point to point communication in the single to multi point topology you can see in this image mobile is connected with the smartwatch it is also connected with the heart rate monitor sensor and it is connected with the temperature sensors as well so we do not see any multi point to multi point topology using ble that is bluetooth low energy and the bluetooth classic so let us see what is bluetooth mesh bluetooth mesh is a low power mesh wireless protocol it is based on bluetooth low energy the device supporting bluetooth low energy advertises first then gets connected with the other device and it data communication starts in bluetooth mesh advertising part is used on the most of the occasion and the rarely or uh, on the rare occasions when the external device which is not supporting the bluetooth mesh wants to communicate with the mesh network then the get related feature is used or the connection related feature is used so this image shows the mesh network you can see the nodes are interconnected and this is the multi to multi point topology so we will see the main features of the bluetooth mesh first is the bluetooth mesh can be used to extend the range to cover the iot sensors spread over the larger area it supports the self filling network and there is no single point failure so in this image you can see that this node is not functioning this node is a relay node so in order to transmit the message from this node to this node the message will travel this path so you can see the network has become reliable it is self filling and there is no single point failure to transmit the data across the network a technique called managed flooding is used the bluetooth mesh does not use the method of routing the way zigbee uses that so here as the advertisement is broadcast every node receives the data or the message so relay node relays the data to the neighboring node that is how the message travels across the network so we will see the device type supported by bluetooth mesh first type is relay node this node retransmits the data or message to the next node the radio of this node is always on and they are generally mains powered these nodes form the backbone of the network with this nodes only the range of the network can be extended next is low power node or the lpn node this is the sensor node which slips most of the time and wakes up to send the data or pull the friend node for any message this node can be a battery operated sensor device it is always attached to a friend node in fact through the friend node only this node communicates with the mesh network next is the friend node this node is a relay node which acts as a parent to the low power node the radio of this node is always on the lpn node it communicates with other nodes through this this node acts as a proxy and can communicate with non mesh device like mobile phone tab it uses the get properties means the mobile will get paired with the proxy node and it can extract whatever data from the network so this image shows the bluetooth mesh device type you can see these are the relay nodes which form the backbone of the network this is the lpn node 
you can see switch is connected to this node and this is another LPN node to which the light is connected or the lamp is connected this LPN node is responsible for measuring the temperature and you can see this LPN nodes are connected with the mesh network through this green colored friend node and here you can see a mobile is connected with the network through the proxy node the mobile phone can see the status of the light it can get the temperature level or the temperature value and it can get the switch status through this proxy node when this switch is operated the state of the lamp or the light can be changed so bluetooth mesh supports this number of device types when any device which support the mesh network or the mesh protocol is not a part of the network then it is called unprovisioned device so this device can be brought into the network by using the procedure called provisioning we will see what the provisioning is the provisioning is an act of bringing the non-provisioned device into the network once the device is provisioned then it will be called as the node so device through which the provisioning process is carried out it is called provisioner that provisioner can be a tablet or a mobile phone on which the provisioner app is running so this image shows the provisioning process this is the provisioner that is the mobile phone and this is the unprovisioned device which is communicating with this provisioner after the provisioning is complete so this device will become the part of this network the provisioning process has five steps first is beaconing the unprovisioned device transmit the advertisement with the mesh beacon ad type or the mesh beacon flag set this advertisement type is uh, specially designed for the bluetooth mesh after receiving the beacons from the unprovisioned device the provisioner sends the provisioning invite request to the unprovisioned device in turn that device sends the information regarding it stating the provisioning capability pdo capability means whether it supports the display or the keyboard etc in the next step exchange of public keys takes place this public keys are exchanged either directly or using out of band method nfc can be used to exchange these keys once the keys are exchanged the authentication process begins the unprovisioned device outputs the random number which is entered in the provisioner and then the cryptographic communication starts once the authentication is uh, done then the session key is generated and the distribution of the rest of the provisioning process is done so once the provisioning process is completed the unprovisioned device becomes node and it joins the mesh network once the provisioning process is completed the unprovisioned device becomes node and it joins the mesh network now new node has a net key mesh security parameter index and a unicast address for BLE security can be optional but for bluetooth mesh security is mandatory the bluetooth mesh offers the security at network application and device level for providing the security at the network level the network key is used network key or the net it can also be called as uh, net key when device joins the mesh network it gets the net key with this the device in the network can decrypt the data up to the network level and this is used by the relay node to re transmit the data but the application data is not exposed as the stage or with the network key application data cannot be decrypted at the application level app key is used to encrypt the data the group of nodes which share the common application can only decrypt or decode this data for example switch and light they can form a group and they can share the same app key so when we operate the switch the status of the light can be changed or the light node can decrypt that data and change the status of the light at the device level the device key is used and this is possessed by every mesh device it is known to the provisioner this device key is used to derive the encryption key during the initial provisioning process this is how the security is ensured at every level now we will see 
when the device is removed from the network what happens when the device is removed from the mesh network it can process all the security keys those keys can be used by the attacker to gain entry into the network so in order to avoid that the bluetooth mesh just refreshes all the security keys and the related data this act can protect the network from the trash can attack now bluetooth mesh also support the privacy the privacy key is derived from the network key it is used to obfuscate the source address thereby making the device traffic tracking difficult so this security arrangement also provides the protection against the replay attacks so bluetooth mesh provides the protection against replay attack by using the sequence number and iv mesh index so these values are incremented and uh, when the message is transmitted then this value is incremented when the next node or the neighboring node gets this sequence number or iv mesh index then it checks it with the value it has previous value it has with it if the sequence number or iv index number is greater than the number it has got earlier then this message is accepted or otherwise the message is discarded so we will see how the message travels in the bluetooth mesh so bluetooth mesh does not use the routing method to deliver the message as it is the case with the zigbee instead the message is broadcast to the neighboring node which may retransmit it to the next node so every node in the network receives the message the message receives the end node from the multiple paths hence the network becomes reliable as the message is broadcast every node is going to receive that message and as every node or rather every relay node is retransmitting the message then the message is going to arrive at the end node from the multiple paths only that's how the reliability of the network is ensured the bluetooth mesh uses the technique called managed flooding the measures behind the term managed flooding are first is heartbeats these are the messages transmitted by the nodes periodically this message indicates the status of the node whether it is active with this message the other nodes can assess how far away this node is next is ttl that is time to live the bluetooth mesh video contains this value called ttl it controls how many hops message is going to cover and thereby this controls the relaying of the message further than required it helps to control relaying and conserve the energy this method can help to avoid the flooding which may choke the network or make the network congested then next is message cache every node in the network has message cache which stores the arrived messages the received message is compared with the message stored in this cache if the same message is received then that message is discarded by the node so retransmission is uh, avoided over here this node provides the maximum optimization mechanism in the bluetooth mesh the friend node receives all the messages for the lpn and stores them with it when the lpn wakes up then it pulls the friend node and then friend node delivers the messages stored for it friend node also accepts the data from the lpn node to distribute it across the network so this node is acting as friend node for this lpn device or the lpn node bluetooth mesh follows the publish and subscribe model for message communication what is publication publication is an act of sending the message in the network and subscribing is the process where the node configured to select a message sent to the specific address the message is always sent by the node to the group address or the virtual address group address is the multicast address represented by specific node elements so here we see what the node elements are a node can consist of one or more elements now we can see a node is representing three lights each light is an element of this node and virtual address is allotted by the manufacturer to the one or more elements of the node this image shows the 
publish and subscribe model used by the Bluetooth mesh. You can see the switches over here which are publishing the messages to the addresses like kitchen, dining room, hallway, bedroom and garden. And these nodes are the lights which are subscribing to these addresses. We can see the switch one is publishing the message to this address and one two three nodes are the subscriber for this this node number three is also subscribed to the dining room address to which the switch two is publishing the message switch three is publishing the message to hallway and these are the two subscriber that is node four and node five or light four or light five switch four is uh, publishing the message to the bedroom and to which the node 6 is attached or subscribed to. These two nodes, uh, that is the switch nodes 5 and 6, they are publishing the message to the garden nodes to which the 7, 8 and 9 nodes are subscribed to. Now we can see what are the possible applications for the Bluetooth mesh protocol. First is it can be used for the home automation next we can use it for controlling the lighting we can use it for the industrial automation this protocol can be used for the agricultural applications or it can also be used for asset tracking many more applications are possible with this bluetooth mesh protocol main advantage is that we can connect it to the mobile phone directly so this feature is not provided by any other protocol like zigbee or thread or the ant so that feature may work in favor of this bluetooth mesh protocol we think this uh, bluetooth mesh protocol is going to play an important role in the coming years in this video we have seen what is bluetooth mesh protocol and we have seen some details about the operation or security and provisioning process so that's it for today thanks for watching the video if you like this video then please hit the like button please share this video with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to this channel thanks again and have a good time